This is Aaron Shedlock. You're listening to the audio flow. 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 With Jacques. Listening to audiobooks never sounded so good. Hey, it would help if I unmute and actually talk to you guys. So this is what happens when you get nervous, right? So <laughs> everybody, welcome to the Audio Flow. I'm Jacques, and I'm excited to be here today. As you can see, I have some special guests with me, and they made me all nervous. I usually don't get nervous, or at least I don't admit that I'm nervous until after the show. But yeah, I am a little bit nervous and a little bit freaked out. So I want to welcome two very special people to today's episode. The Karen Lynch is on with us today. Hey, Karen. Hey, would you stop calling me the Karen Lynch, please? <laughs> <laughs> See, this is how our relationship is. She couldn't say, hey, Jock, how are you? It's so good to be here. It's no, can you stop calling me the Karen Lynch? Okay, yeah. Do you want me to tell everybody what you really call me? Who I am? No? Sure. Go no, ahead. We won't do that because I said we couldn't <laughs> say any um, curse words. No, we'll get to that later. And then we also have the lovely Caitlin Greer on with us today. Hey, Caitlin. Hey, Zach. How are you? Oh, I'm just chipper. <laughs> we're, all, we're, we're all things excited today because I get to have both of you guys on my show, too. Uh, two very special people to me. Even though Karen like talks mad trash about me, I know she loves me. And I am glad to have you on the show because you know why? Because I've given you a hashtag, like because patch. <laughs> and <laughs> it's just so weird that I call you that because the book is not about patch, really. But yeah, I could say because Nora, but no, patch sounds so much better. I was just saying, I think you're on a one woman crusade to make because patch a thing. <laughs> it is going to be a thing, I swear. And and Karen, we have to get Karen on board so that she can actually read or listen to the Hush Hush saga. But enough about that. We'll get to that later on. Ladies, today is Tuesday. How's it going so far for you this week? It's going great. Great. I've been really busy. I'm getting ready to go out of town. I'm going to Canada this week and you know, with everything else going on and writing and stuff, it's been kind of crazy. But, and, you know. Well, that's good. And Caitlin, how's your week been? My week's good. You know, never, two days in a row are never the same when you're a voiceover artist. So every day is an adventure and, and that's how I love it. I wouldn't have it be any other way. Well, that's good. I'm glad that you guys, I'm glad that Karen decided that we were going to uh, do a video chat because this gives me an idea, a little inside peek into um, everybody's life. So um, I know Karen is in an office and there's a bunch of books on the shelf. I have no idea what those books are, Karen. And I think, Caitlin, is that like, is that a map? You have a map back there? Yeah, so my office is half my office and half my son's playroom. Yeah. So you're sharing <laughs> so what, you're sharing a space. So what you're seeing behind me is his side of the room. If you were on his side facing my way, you'd see my side room. <laughs> oh, got it. And Karen, are you sharing your office with your dogs? Or is no, they're not allowed in there. They're letting me share their space with them. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're letting you share their space. Oh, that's so nice of them. Hey, guess where I am? And the cats. I'm, Where are you? I'm in a library. Yes. I'm in, <laughs> I'm in the public library, and there's a piano. You know, I thought libraries were supposed to be quiet spaces, but I'm right at the front door, and I can hear everybody coming in and laughing. So if you guys hear that, just know that libraries aren't what they used to be. So, yeah, <laughs> Well, we're not know. hearing that, so I think you're good. Okay, well, great. All right, so I uh, let's 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 talk a little bit about you guys and your collaboration. So I will tell you, uh, in case you guys didn't know and the listeners didn't know, how I actually met Karen and how I got involved with the Relentless series uh, on audio. So 
I, I talked about this, and thank you, Karen, for being the very first um, person that I had a chat with on my podcast for Booking Around Town. So, yay, we're glad to have a, an alumni. So, yay, Karen. Um, <laughs> but she kind of threatened me. And Caitlin, you didn't know the story, but she threatened me at a book event and told me. I did? She threatened Oh, me. girl, I yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Just trying to play like you don't remember. So we were at Carolina Book Fest, October 2015, I think. September, October, whatever. And she says, have you read any of my books? Now, that's one thing a blogger never wants an author to ask you. Have you read one of their books? Because you don't want to say, um, yeah, I read it. And then you don't know anybody in the story. And then you don't want to say, no, I didn't read it. Because then it's like, well, why are you talking to me? <laughs> so, so that's kind of what happened. Well, she was and, buying a bunch of books from me. That's why I didn't know. <laughs> she did. Well, hey, I'm a, I always support people. It doesn't mean that I've read everything, but I liked you and you were funny. And we used to chat on Facebook and you were like, oh, I thought you were in my reader group. And I'm like, no, we just talk on Facebook. And so uh, she said, well, when you come, when you see me again in Roanoke in April, you better have read those books. I said, OK. So, yeah, she threatened me. So this is when I started into audiobooks, and I was like, ooh, they're on audio. So enter Relentless on audio and Caitlin as Sarah. And, man, Caitlin, you were absolutely amazing in those books. I, I scoffed those books down or binged them. I think in two days I finished all three books. So that ought to tell you how good I thought your performance was. So um, I love I'd love to know a little bit about how you how you and Karen connected. What was your relationship like when you found out that you would be playing this this role? Well, I think Karen should probably start because she knew an earlier part of the process than I did. I, I came in when it was already partway underway with her and the and the audiobook production. So Karen well, for me Yeah, for me, um well Audible approached me to do the series. So I knew that they had full control over, you know, what creative control over what narrators and stuff to pick. So I went to them and they were giving me some names and to listen to. And I was like, no, no, no. And I said, hey, have you guys ever worked with Caitlin Greer? I really like her. And they were like, yeah, we know Caitlin. And so the next day they came back and said, OK, yeah, we got Caitlin Greer. I was like, yes. So then Caitlin emailed me a little while later, and introduced herself and I think mainly it was because we were doing a pronunciation guide because I have anyone who's read my books knows I have a ton of made up words and different <laughs> languages and stuff, stuff I made up and stuff that's other languages. And so we, I didn't realize until she asked me, it was, it came out to be this huge pronunciation guide that she asked for. So that's how we chatted mostly just via um, email. Yeah. So as a narrator, you know, from, from my perspective, I don't get to know what's gone on before I get pulled into a project. Um, in fact, I asked Karen recently, hey, can you tell me what took place before I joined in the group here? <laughs> um, so, you know, I get a request from Audible or whomever the publisher is, either directly or, or usually through my agent. And they say, you know, we have this book project for you if you could take it on. And obviously I wanted to do this book. And my first step after that, I introduce myself to Karen via email, but um, it's usually just a, hey, thanks for having me on your project. Great to be doing this. And then I have to sit with the book and I have to go through it. So in this case, there was a heavy pronunciation guide, but I wouldn't have known that until I'd made my way through the script. So, you know, I'm doing a lot of legwork, you know, or, or reading work, I guess, um, on my own time first and making note of where all those in the example of the pronunciation guide, where all those words are that I'm going to need to reach back to the author about. Um, and once I've got that compiled, then I get back in touch. So I got back in touch with Karen and we had, <laughs> we had a lengthy list to go through. And some of them were um, words that she had invented. And some of them were words that were names that had multiple pronunciations. And I don't want to make a judgment on that, a judgment call on that. I want to make sure I'm staying true to the author's vision, um, which is why it's sometimes funny to me when you see like the readers and listeners um, chatting in a fan group or talking when you meet them in person and saying, oh, I always pronounce a certain name this way, but you yeah. pronounce it differently. And you want to say, well, I, I'm just trying to follow instructions. <laughs> yeah. There was actually a, she asked me how to pronounce Nicholas. 
And there was a huge discussion in the Mohiri group after about how people had envisioned his name. And some people mm-hmm. didn't like Nicola. Some people thought it should be a Francis different way mm-hmm. I loved it and it was funny because when she asked me I was like oh, I don't want how do I want to do that because I know people have their own you know thoughts on how he looks or how he sounds um so yeah that was a, a decision the, the main the main one of the main persons that everybody fell in love with and their their whole thought was well how do you pronounce you know how I you know what I call him I just say Nick I mean, I don't even go through the whole process of calling him Nicholas or Nicholas. He's just Nick. I'm just really simple like that. But, yeah, Karen has a ton of uh, names that I'm glad that you, she and you worked out so that I didn't have to try to figure out how it was pronounced in my head. So good job there. And and thanks, Karen, <laughs> for uh, the Karenisms and the uh, Karen language that we have all come up. <laughs> so, Thank you. Lord. You know, different narrators handle that differently. I'm sure I can't speak for everybody, but for me, I want to make sure that my pronunciations are staying true to what the author had in his or her imagination when when she was writing this book. You know, that's my goal, um, and that's just my, my comfort level. I want to make sure I'm I'm true to their vision. Right, and so I I want to talk a little bit to Karen about audiobooks because. Um, I don't, Karen, were you really into audiobooks before Audible approached you at purchasing the license for the books? Or is that something over a period of time and with the um, now five audiobooks in your, in your library that you've come to enjoy? No. Oh, I didn't really know much about audiobooks. Um, and I listened to so many samples in the year before I was planning on, I was talking to some other authors about doing them myself, getting them produced and stuff. And I didn't know Audible was going to approach me. So I was researching and I listened to so many samples of, 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 of narrators were listening to young adult books and different books. And that's how I found Caitlin. I wasn't into, I didn't really know what to look for. I just was going by, oh, who sounds most like what I envisioned Sarah's voice to sound like. That's what I went by. Um, it was the same thing when I was looking for the who was going to play Nicholas when I was doing Warrior. I mean, when they approached me about Warrior, I already knew who I wanted to play, you know, to, to do his voice. But um, the um, I never really got into audiobooks until someone gifted me a book. In, I think it was January or February of this year, somebody said, you've got to listen to this book. And, <laughs> I wonder who that special person was. I wonder. (laughs) And then I got into, and that was um, adult contemporary romance. And then that's when I got in really into um, that. That's what got me into listening for pleasure. The first book I ever listened to was Relentless. That was because I just wanted to hear how it went. Mm -hmm. And other than that, I didn't. So, Caitlin, you were my first narrator that I ever listened to. <laughs> oh, yeah, <you> thanks. <laughs> so. You know, that brings you to another really interesting part of our process. When you talk about it being a collaboration, it is a collaboration, but there are long stretches of work that we do where the other one is not privy to what's taking place. So mm-hmm. after we do that pronunciation guide, um, you know, and clarify anything else I might have questions about in the text, I then go into the studio and I'm recording this book and, and it isn't as though Karen is there with us or even getting daily, you know, recordings to listen to, you know, um, that's really a process that I'm engaging in with my director engineer before she gets brought back in. Well, I, I love that you um, that you guys have had uh, such different sides of this coin. And I like that Karen said you were her first. Because, I mean, you were her first narrator <laughs> she listened to, and you were her first audiobook. And so it, it's just fitting that you were the one who had, I, okay, so I gifted her an audiobook, yes, of course. But you were the <laughs> one who, who, who introduced her to this side of the industry. And so while you were going through your process, um, it, so how long did it take you uh, to actually get through reading the books I don't know if you had a timeline between Relentless, then Rogue, and then Refuge. Did you have, you know, a timeline or a deadline that you needed to have them completed? Or do you kind of just go through, you have all of this, 
the scripts and the books because they were already out. So did it take you less time than it normally takes you to do um, maybe some books that uh, all the series isn't yet out or released yet? Um, well, there there are multiple questions in that question. Let me separate mm-hmm. them out. One is that um, the timeline on the project is collaborative. There are a lot of people involved who have obligations and timelines that need to be met. Um, and I'm only one small voice in that hierarchy. Uh, no pun intended, saying voice. Um, so usually when Audible gets in touch with me, they will have a timeline in mind. But then the studio, the engineer that I work with, has to also make sure that timeline matches their studio bookings. Mm-hmm. And they have to check with me to make sure my schedule accommodates that. So there are a lot of moving parts that have to be coordinated um, in terms of how long it takes the actual books to be recorded and then mastered and ready to be released to the audience. Um, so that's the answer to one piece of that question. In terms of my prep time, um, I can tell you a few things that increase prep time on an audiobook for a narrator. And, and Karen, you let me know if any of these things sound familiar. <laughs> Made up language. <laughs> <laughs> Made Heck. up language. Um, words in foreign languages. Um, a lot of different accents from all over the world. <laughs> Karen, is sounding familiar yet? <laughs> yeah. like, um, a lot of different characters, particularly when they're all in dialogue with each other and scenes with a lot of different voices. Um, so those are all things that increase a narrator's prep time. And this series obviously is heavy on those things. So what that means is for me, Um, I can't just go into the booth cold and start to record these books. I need to have read them completely through before I go in. Um, I need to have done my homework, which means learning any accents I don't already have in my toolkit, going through that pronunciation guide we were talking about, coming up with a voice for each of the characters. And this is a a large catalog of characters in this series. Um, And then what I actually do is uh, use a program called I Annotate on my iPad And I mark each character's dialogue with a different color highlighter. One of the great things about that program is you have a crazy number of colors you can use. So I should screenshot for you guys and send it to you. But my page looks like fruit salad because it has so (laughs) many colors. Because sometimes Karen has scenes where you have, you know, six, eight characters and they're all having a conversation. But doing that allows me to switch character voices quickly when I'm narrating, um, which saves me a lot of time in the booth. Mm -hmm. So... You know, per listening hour, what you guys listen to, we're never, we're always recording more hours than you guys get to listen to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that varies by narrator and by how complex the, the project is. So, um, you know, on average, I hear what I hear a word on the street is a lot of narrators are taking something like two hours in the booth per finished recorded hour you, the audience gets to listen to. Uh, um, I tend to be faster than that. I prefer to put more time in on my prep before I get into the booth and spend less time in the booth. So I think I'm at something like an hour and 20 in the booth for every finished hour. Um, but again, it varies product projects by project. Go Caitlin. You, <laughs> you also, you also make notations for what the mood of, if the language is right. Like if someone is angry or if someone is upset or scared, you also do that as well. Right. A hundred percent. And you know, something that happens a lot in writing is we get the tone of voice after we get the dialogue. So, you know, sure, she said excitedly. Well, mm. excitedly came last, right? And if I'm narrating, I need to know that that sure is in an excited tone of voice. Right. So I've read that ahead of time and I've marked in my script right before the dialogue, excited, so that I make sure to read that tone that corresponds to whatever instruction the author has given later on in that paragraph. It just seems like, Okay, I love audiobooks, and a lot of us as listeners, um, just like we read books, we don't really always understand all of the work that it takes to get to the end project. And some of us, I mean, I'm guilty of this too. I'm like, can you hurry up with that audiobook, or can you like <laughs> write that book just a little bit faster? Um, but the more that I have these conversations, the more patience I've learned to have because we want it to be good and you want it to be good. You want it to be um, a work that you're proud of. And so, and so, 
you know, because Caitlin has this prep time and Karen has to finish the book, <clears throat> Faded. And, you know, so we just have to sit and wait um, for you to, you know, get to that point where we can get it in our hands. And we're like, yes, it was amazing. And that's the thing that I enjoyed. Like I said, I did. I won't say I cheated and didn't read all three books because I like that somebody else can perform it for me. I mean, why not, right? And so when you had to find these voices for these characters, um, I always think that's interesting again because I want to know, I want to know, do you actually um, get in touch with, you know, Karen and say, hey, I'm thinking about, you know, going with this particular voice. What do you think? Or do you just kind of go with, you know, a mood and you're saying, I think he sounds like this and I'm just going to put it in. So how much of that do you guys work out together before you just say this is this is Nicol this is how Nikolai song Nicholas sounds? Well, the first thing I do is get as many clues as I can from what's written on the page. Um, you know, and I guess part of that comes from my theater background, from my training, having gone to school for theater, because one of the things that they taught us was, um, read a play for what the other characters say about your character. And you're going to learn valuable things about creating your character based on what everybody else is saying. So my instinct from that training is to look for any clues the author has given me first and foremost about what each character is going to sound like. Beyond that, if I don't have any clues or I need to build something on top of the clues, those are choices that I make as an actor. Um, so it, it would be unlikely that I would go back to Karen about a character voice choice unless I really felt that that I was at risk of making a choice that conflicted with her vision, which which is not doesn't really happen. So I don't know, Karen. Was there anything that was so, you know, on the mark or off the mark that you thought, oh, I would have done that a different way or or that's exactly how I envisioned it? You me? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you, Karen. The Karen Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, no, that's that's right. We didn't really talk about um, what's his character like. She pretty much nailed him down really well. Um, the only thing we talked about was like, you know, who, what's his accent and how do you pronounce his name and stuff like that. And I don't even think I had to t say anything like, oh, Nicholas is like that. When I was doing um, Warrior, um, the narrator for Warrior, he asked me, well, what can you tell me about Nicholas's personality? But then I was like, well, here's the pronunciation guide that Caitlin did, so you might <laughs> want to use this too. Trust me, you're going to need it. Um, so every, like she said, everyone has a different level of prep. Some people are more on the fly in the booth, and some people are like do a lot more prep up front. And I'm one of those people who I like to be prepared so I'm, I really appreciate that a lot yeah, you guys, yeah Karen you and guys, I have that in common yes you do I was just getting ready to say that you guys are like one in the same because yeah Karen's ultra organized and me not so much so, so we balance out greatest friends because she's that other side and I'm just kind of like I don't know I don't have anything planned let's just go with it and she's like no step by step step by step spreadsheet <laughs> this is how I and I'm like yeah whatever but well it's funny that you say spreadsheet because our pronunciation guide was a spreadsheet <laughs> I, I, I believe it I believe it and it probably was like color-coded and I, I mean yeah that's that's all Karen and but yeah, it's I interesting can't. that she it's interesting that Karen brought up the question of the accents because that is, she's right. That's a place where I did have to go back to her because she's got these characters who mm -hmm. would have had heavily accented English, but they're hundreds of years old. So after hundreds of years exposed to American English, do they still retain any accent, a little right. accent? So that, that is, that's something we had to collaborate on. Yeah. Cause I did say that Nicholas had a faint Russian accent and I don't remember any, anybody else just, I think you said he had, the accent was faint except when he got angry. When he got anyway. angry. And, and she and, actually mentions that. Sarah mentions that in the first book that she can pick up the accent when he's mad every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think that um, when I went through when I went through the book, and, and not only, uh, there's a lot of people that really enjoyed your portrayal of Nick. And so, yeah, we liked Sarah, and we liked all the other characters. Um Elderon, you know, it's like my favorite. And uh, of course, Chris. Oh, Desmond. Desmond. And Desmond. Desmond. Oh my God. So totally love them. But like the way that you 
as a female, you know, we sometimes don't always expect for a female to sound like a dude. Like, you know, let's be honest. You're not, you're not a dude. You're not gonna, you know, have all this extra. You, I, they're laughing at me. I can see them. But <laughs> you're not gonna have like this all this extra bass. And I think for you and with so many listeners. Um, we had this whole thing about, well, who's going to do Warrior? And it was like, well, is Caitlyn going to do... It was like, is Caitlyn going to do Warrior? You know, and I and it was so funny because people were okay with it if we, if we went that route because you did yep. such a good job with... Um, just his attitude with his with the tone, with the hint of Russian, with you know all of that. You gave us this identity and this voice for for Nick. And um, but then I want to kind of go over to Haven a little bit um, because it was a dual narration, and uh, we are celebrating. This call is really one part to celebrate the release of Haven that released June twenty seventh. And you did okay. So Karen, how much of how much can I talk about Haven? Because there's like, um, if you haven't listened to the other three, and I started talking about who Caitlyn portrayed, then I'm gonna give it away. So can I just say like, okay? So <laughs> if you haven't listened, if you haven't read Haven yet, mute your headset right now. Okay. <laughs> Don't listen. <laughs> I you have been warned. Yes, so I'm going to try not to mention the character's name. Um, so how different for you, Caitlin, and you, Karen, deciding that you, you wanted Caitlin to come back and revamp a, a, another character, how, how different was the process for you going into it with this person's background versus Sarah? Karen, you want to take that first, how yeah, you decided you, mean, that you wanted as, me as to a, do it? Yeah. <laughs> you mean as a right you talking about as a narrator or yes, as a writer? Yes. As a narrator. Well for me, I mean obviously obviously it was different. I mean I was in a different character. Um the storyline was gonna be um more of a love story than the action packed story that like the relentless was kinda crazy at times, but Haven was never meant to be like that. It was supposed to be a love story. Mm -hmm. And Sarah had, you know, her issues, but okay, Emma had a, a really heavy, dark background. So it was my first time kind of delving into that kind of baggage that someone carried with them with some kind of with the trauma that she had suffered in her past. And so that was different. And then plus, Roland was the best friend in the series. He was like the boy next door in the series. But I always envisioned him growing into something different. So I had fun with him developing his making him more alpha making him you know more of an adult so he had more of a growth uh, character arc i think in the book um but yeah i mean it was it was definitely different going from like nicholas to roland and then sarah to emma i mean completely different characters all together mm -hmm. uh, i don't know how you would approach that as a narrator how it would be different but for me the dual point of view was hard to write is very hard to switch between I mean I thought after writing Nicholas in Warrior completely like for the whole book thing I thought that would be like oh I can do anything now I've written Nicholas <laughs> but no it was it was actually hard doing the dual point of view I struggled with it and I'm still struggling with it I'm struggling with it for the faded is dual point of view and I'm struggling with it again because it's just switching back and forth between the characters and trying to decide you know I've got this pivotal scene and it's important to both of them. Whose point of view do I put it in? And, do I switch, you know? and you'll, you'll notice that there's scenes in Haven where it's in her point of view. Then it switches to his point of view. And then it goes back to hers because I needed to figure out how to, to do that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much, it was, it was a really different experience writing a dual point of view, different characters. Cause I've been in Sarah's and Nicholas's head for, you know, three years. So it was, right. it was different. It's nice though switching to a different couple. Yeah. So, Caitlin. <laughs> um, so I will tell you that um, the first thing that happens when you've done a series and you get a book that's a spinoff onto a new character is you go, "Oh no, what voice did I give this character, <laughs> and am I going to be able to sustain it for an entire book?" <laughs> uh, 
because sometimes you make character choices that are easily sustainable for a few lines of dialogue that would not be <laughs> easily sustainable for hours of recording. <laughs> um, so that was the first thought. And then I went back and listened to the choice I had made for Emma, and I went, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's doable. <laughs> yes. Um, now, obviously, as a narrator, there are things that you can do to help yourself if you do wind up in a situation where you made a choice and you weren't expecting to do a whole book in that voice, and, and you can... Um, ease yourself and the listener into a place that's a happy medium that you can mm -hmm. sustain. But in this case, I didn't have to do that. Um, I got I got lucky with Karen's choice of who this next narrator was going to be, next character was going to be. Um, so I went back, I listened, I made sure I was staying true to the voice that I had given Emma in the earlier book, but also, um, you know, as now that she's the narrator and we're hearing her internal thoughts as opposed to just her dialogue, um, she gets some different nuances. Mm -hmm. You know, we get to hear that, what she sounds like when she's being internal, what she sounds like when she's frustrated with herself. You know, a lot of different emotions that she experiences personally that she's not necessarily sharing outwardly in her dialogue. So that's mm -hmm. really fun too, is now I get to explore the depths of this character who didn't get a whole lot of depth in that internal way in a previous book. Um, and then in terms of your question about the dual narration, I love that. I'm actually, I really love having the opportunity to do that for a couple of reasons. Um, the, the biggest reason is that it turns it into an even more collaborative process. And it means that we get to expand our audiences because there are listeners who would come to that book, would come to Haven specifically because I'm narrating and now they're going to get to know Zach for the first time. And maybe they're going to listen to what else he's done. And then the opposite is true. There are listeners who would come to Haven because they like Zach's work, and now they're going to be introduced to me for the first time and explore what else I've done. Um, and I love that because, you know, sometimes as a voiceover artist, we, we aren't always, and I'm sure this is true of writers too, we aren't always so tapped into a sense of collaboration and community because a lot of our work happens independently. Mm -hmm. So any opportunity like this podcast right now to to connect with my colleagues and collaborate and and feel like I'm part of a bigger artistic community, I welcome that. Well, you're always welcome on the show, Caitlin, and Karen's always welcome when she's being nice to me and stuff. So <laughs> he threatened me if I didn't come on, so I just. Didn't... <laughs> but Kate, plus she uh, sent me a care package. She sucked I, up. I did. I sent, sent you a birthday gift because I'm because I'm your friend. I'm supposed to do stuff like that. But, um, yeah, when we go on our road trip, that'll be fun. Caitlin, make sure you stay tuned to those live videos because we're we're gonna we're gonna uh blow up the internet with our shenanigans on the road, so we wanna reach every audience when we do that video but um but Karen I, video I, I did not agree to video it's a, you agreed this was it was your decision, so stop stop now uh, <laughs> well, you just Karen, let me know where where Brooklyn falls on your tour schedule. Oh, yeah, we, we're going to make that happen, too, at some point. Um, but, Karen, um, you and I had this discussion before, and I, I wanted to bring bring it out now um, about writing style. Now that you have um, kind of jumped into um, putting having your books on audio, has your writing style changed any so that it can be um, – so it flows better um, when it comes yeah. to audio yes. books? Yes, I was actually listening to Warrior when I was writing, as I was writing Haven. And it made me more, I don't know why, I think I, maybe it was something about the way Zach narrated it. Because it's, I don't know, uh, it, or if it just seemed to jump off the page to me that oh, I could do things better, like when for narrating, narrating. So when I was thinking about the use of dialogue tags and how, how things are done, I think I started to eliminate some of the dialogue tags. I'm trying to put more action instead of dialogue tags in. And I think that's part of growing as an author anyway. You do that with each book you get, you change, you know, how you grow your style as you as you mature as an author. Mm -hmm. And but I really did start thinking like, oh, how is this gonna sound when someone narrates it? Because I mean, to think that you're not gonna put an audio book out there, I mean it's such a it's such a big frontier that's opening up and it's relatively new as far as, you know, people listening, um, 
it's only been like really a couple of years that it's gotten really big and it's really mm-hmm. taken off and you I, it, you wouldn't be fair to your readers and to yourself not to put out a good audiobook so i'm trying to write now and the, I, I know that there's people who write audiobooks exclusively i'm not there but I don't know. I'd love to find out how they write. Uh, that's something I've been wanting to look into. Like, how do you write exclusively for audio? Like, what's different? Um, because I know, like, Chris and Ashley, she's written some books that are exclusively. She does adult contemporary. And her audio books are just really, really good. They're captivating. Mm-hmm. So it made me listening. And since I've been listening to audio now, especially the last in the first half of this year, it's made me start to think differently about how things are written versus how they're spoken. Because I've always said my dialogue out loud when I'm um, writing. I always read my dialogue back to me to make sure it sounds right. But then everything else that goes on around the dialogue, I'm starting to think about that now as well as far as um, narration. So yeah, it's definitely changed um, how I'm thinking. I don't, I don't hear like, Oh, I'm hearing this narrator as I'm as I'm writing, and I'm not I'm not that point yet. Well, maybe one, but you know who that is. But um, there is just uh, sometimes I'll I'll think about that. I'll get someone's voice in my head when I'm thinking about a future book, you know. But uh, I definitely has changed how I write, um, or at least maybe more conscious of what I'm writing down in my style. Yeah. Karen, you just gave me you just gave me a really cool idea for a future collaboration. So you know how the fans are clamoring for storylines from other secondary characters? Don't you, don't go there. You could write <laughs> Mayday, just, Mayday, check the sky no, chat box. You could, <laughs> no. you could write such vignettes. <laughs> vignettes that are straight to audio. That's all. That's what I was going to say. Rather than, <laughs> uh, I see what you're saying. Write directly for audio. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just say yeah because you start mentioning. Remember when the fans said they want it, and then everybody's ears perks up, and then poor Karen, and she won't <laughs> she won't get to bake or do any of those fun things she likes to do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> because she'll just be she'll just be in the house in the corner writing for audio. Well, that's books. what I do now. <laughs> well, yeah, sort of, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> but we we do have a question for you, Caitlin, from Sean, who is oh, Sean, are you in, are you in Boston? He's somewhere he's in New up York. there. Is it Sean Wood? Because he's in New he, York. He no, he lives. He doesn't live in New York. He's on the East Coast somewhere. Sean, where are you from? Massachusetts. He's from Massachusetts. But he wanted to know, Caitlin, he wanted to know who was the hardest character in Karen's books to give voice to? Oh, that's a great question. Um, Definitely not Sarah. She was the easiest one. That was a very natural connection for me. Um, I would probably say Nicholas because it was such an important choice Mm -hmm. because this was a choice that was going to carry us through. Remember when I started, I knew there were three books. I didn't know there were going to be five, but (laughs) I knew there there were three. And I knew that, that this choice was going to carry us through three books. And I knew that, um, can I say some things that would spoil the first book? Is that okay? Or no spoilers at all. Oh yeah, go ahead. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. Knowing that um, Sarah's journey to falling in love with Nicolas was not going to be straightforward, he had to win the listeners over just like he had to win her over. Mm -hmm. And so that was a very important character choice. Mm -hmm. And I I took that responsibility seriously. Yeah. And I, you know, what's the, what's so funny about Relent, uh, Karen, when did Relentless release? 2013 14 yes it was December 2013 and do you know the popularity of Nicholas is still booming he was he was just nominated again for best book boyfriend and I think every year he's nominated for best book boyfriend which I think has a lot to do with not only 
um, those persons that read the book, but also people who listen to the audio book, there's something in, in, um, in both platforms that people relate to and that they connect with. So that should be, um, that is an applause to both of you guys. One, Karen, for writing this character that everybody is in love with. Like, I swear, the book is four years old and people still love him. Like, like the book just came out yesterday. So, and then Caitlin gave him this voice that um, made us fall in love with him, even when he was being a name that I can't say because, you know, this is, you know, the clean version of the podcast. Um, <laughs> is there a dirty the clean, version of the podcast? It's the clean. <laughs> It's the semi clean. We get, we did all the expletives before we started, so we I think we're okay with that. Um, so so Karen, you have um, some things coming up that we're excited about, and so we want to talk a little bit about what projects you have going on, and then we'll find out what Caitlin has going on. Oh, but before we do that, everybody, okay. So Caitlin has a hashtag, right? It's called, it's Because Patch. And so I had to get a little background in this. Actually, what's funny, Karen told me that Caitlin narrated the Hush Hush Saga. I didn't know because I read the books first, back when I had time to read in 2014. And <laughs> I would just say, okay, it's no offense to all my author friends. I love you. I love you all to pieces. But Becca Fitzpatrick, like the Hush Hush Saga is my favorite YA series. What? Ever. I'm sorry, Karen. <laughs> I put my head down in shame. And what I say that, that because it was the it was the first YA series that I ever read. I, I, I didn't do Twilight. I wasn't into any of that, you know, the other stuff. And I read this one because it was recommended. I don't know. I was on Amazon and I and I read it. And so then this earlier this year, Karen and I were talking, and she probably told me this before. It's thundering. Can y'all hear it? But anyway, I can hear it. Okay, yes, we have a thunderstorm. And so Karen was like, "Yeah, um, the person that's gonna, the person that narrated the book, she did the Hush Hush Saga." And I was like, "What, Patch?" <laughs> and so, and so this year, um, she had a mini freak out. I did. I was like, oh, my God, I got a friend request there. Oh, my God. She did. And so I went, and I, I just had this flashback, and I went, and I just got all the books, and I just listened yeah. to them. And I just she, she and had I was, all these credits. She I did. I had, like, 18 so credits, and I just had to buy time. it. And then I told Karen, Karen, you need to go and download them and listen to them. They're so good. And so I would love to know, first, two questions, Caitlin. Um, do, you re do you remember... Your first recording, your first audiobook, and second, do you remember what it was like to work with that series? Because that was, you know, pretty early on when I, I think it was pretty early on when Y when PNR and YA was like really blowing. It was just exploding. Um, so first, yeah, do you remember what your first audiobook was? Yeah, I was really young. My first audiobook was The Steps by Rachel Cohn. Um, and I didn't know anything about audiobooks. It was not something that I had done before. I was a voiceover artist in other areas. And my agent sent me out to, to audition for this audiobook. And they needed, it was a very young narrator. Um, and they needed somebody who could sound young. But it was also, um, half, the, half the story was set in Australia. So half the characters had Australian accents. And they sent me because they knew that I could learn accents very quickly for Ooh. whatever reason. That's something that I can do. So I think I had, you know, 24 hours notice on this audition and I had to learn an Australian accent. Um, but I went in and I booked it. And this is going so far back. Now, we were talking about I annotate with the fruit salad, with the highlighting. Uh -huh. This is going so far back that we were working off of paper scripts. We were not <laughs> oh, working wow. on iPads. Um, and so instead of highlighting every character in a different color, I would have a different symbol for each character. And I would mark, you know, one person got an asterisk before their line of dialogue and somebody else got a squiggly line and somebody else got a carrot and somebody oh, wow. else got a heart. <laughs> wow. I was switching through these symbols. And because I had gotten thrown into this without any lessons or classes or, or mentoring from an older audiobook narrator, I invented that for myself. I mean, I literally just went, well, I, I'm going to have to figure out how to do this. So I invented a system that worked for me. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my first book. 
And um, it was actually, it was an amazing experience, but it was definitely trial by fire, no question. Um, and then the second part of your question was, what do I remember about uh, narrating the Hush Hush Saga? Yes, because I just need to know. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm totally fangirling right now. I normally try not to do that, uh, but I get to look at you and like listen to you talk to me all at the same time. So what's a girl to do but to ask those questions? She's blushing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the first thing I'll say is that Becca Fitzpatrick is wonderful to work with. She's lovely. And that was the first audio book I did where I was in contact with the author. The earlier titles I did, um, you know, I got my information from publishers and directors and my agent, and I wasn't speaking directly with the authors. Um, but Becca and I had the opportunity to do an interview similar to this one mm -hmm. way back when for those books. So she and I made a personal connection and got to talk. Um, and that was made it an even better experience than the other books I had narrated. Because, again, this idea of collaboration and colleagues and community and and, you know, here you are creating a work of art with a group of people and you don't ever talk to some of them. And that mm -hmm. always felt a little bit strange to me. So, mm -hmm. so that's one of the most memorable things about that experience for me. Um, and yes, you are right. You know, paranormal YA seems to be a sweet spot for me. <laughs> I've done, I've done my fair share of those. Um, but I am a huge science fiction and fantasy reader myself mm -hmm. and always have been since I was a kid. So that fits just perfectly with what I like. So I'm, I'm thrilled to do it. Well, do you, and you, you brought up a point and I wanted to say, so do you guys think that, um, having that relationship with the, your narrator and the author, um, creates a, I don't want to say creates a better outcome of a, of a product, but do you think having that relationship kind of makes things go a, a, a little bit more smoothly or, um, what's your idea on that? Because you said that that was your, the first time that you had actually, you know, spoken with an author and normally it's just direct, you know, there's a middleman and, you know, all that. So um, how does that make things, you know, easier or better when you are working, Karen, when you're working in, in communication with your narrator? Um, I think it makes it better um, because you have a better understanding. Uh, like Caitlin, I just talked through email until Haven and then we would we connected on Haven and then I don't know one of us sent the other a friend requests on Facebook and then we just started talking on Facebook and now we're like buddies <laughs> doing videos <laughs> you know? and so yeah and now she's in my groups and I'm following her page and so like, but it, if she I think she has a better understanding of the books now and because she's interacting with my readers and she's seen how cool my readers are in the Mohiri group. I have the best readers. Um, and so I think it helps her understand what they see in the characters and what they love. And I think that's, that's a really big perception. It's a really big, important thing. When you're doing like a performance, which is what the narrators do, they're doing a performance and it helps them when they know what their audience is, mm -hmm. I think. Um, so yeah, I think it's really important. And plus Caitlin's really cool. So, and I'm going to go to Brooklyn to visit her. So, <laughs> cool. and I'm going to, <laughs> you know, I think Karen really hit on, on something important with the, how amazing her fan group is. And she's absolutely right. The Mohiri she group comments, she's commented it on that several times. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Mohiri group on Facebook is unlike any other fan group I have encountered. And I think it's a combination of things. I think, Karen's work attracts a group of people who wants to participate in a conversation with her. And they've been kind enough to let me participate in that conversation with them. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the work that Karen does to keep the um, conversation in that group positive, productive, um, collaborative, you know, and encouraging of, of her fans' voices in her process is a gorgeous thing. And, and I benefit from that because now I'm in that group and I do hear what the fans are saying or read what they're typing as the case may be <laughs> um, about, you know, the impact that these books have on them and the directions they would like to see them go in, whether we go in those directions or we don't, that is all fabulous. 
And you guys have to remember when I narrated my first audiobooks, there was no Facebook. Yeah. Right? Wow. <laughs> so when you talk about being in touch with the authors and, and collaborating and being part of a community, that really didn't exist in that same way mm-hmm. for my early titles. Um, and I, I love it. I love it. So you mean there was MySpace then? <laughs> Probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, I must say, though, that I, I have to give a credit to the, for the Mohiri group. It kind of self, it's kind of self-governed. The people in there are really well-behaved. But the admins, um, Sarah and Jeannie and Raina and all the admins that are in there and, and Jeff, and um, if I forget anyone, I'm sorry. Um, they do a really good job of making sure. And they also handle uh, Club YA, which is the other group with all the other authors, they're really good at moderating the group and making sure that people stay on track. And for the most part, we don't have anyone doing any bad posts or, you know, posting anything that's inappropriate or anything like that. They're a really good crowd. I've been, like I said, I've just been really blessed when it comes to my reader group um, for all my readers, a very respectful group of people. So, and fun. They're a lot of fun. I mean, that's why I like going in there because they're fun to hang out with when they have all these, like the last teaser that came the out in July. Yeah. They have so <laughs> many theories, but listen, let me tell you what, there's so many theories floating around. They're like, Karen's at home chuckling right now. And I really was, I was laughing, but I'm <laughs> like, man, these people are like investigative reporters. We should put them on like the Russia scandal and they can yeah. figure out exactly what's going on because they are really good at figuring stuff out. They, they analyze everything and it's kind of fun. And it's cool that they're getting, they're so into the books that they're doing that. But then it makes me paranoid because like, I got to make sure that everything is perfect because they're going to analyze the crap out of this. Oh, sorry. They're going to analyze. <laughs> hey, crap is okay. You could say crap. Okay. Crap's okay. <laughs> so yeah, like it's, it's fun. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to have people like that, that are, that I'm interacting with. And then, you know, writing is solitary. Mm-hmm. And so you go online and you're talking with your author friends and stuff like that. But, I found as an indie author, and I'm sure traditional authors have this too, but I found as an indie author that the community is so warm and the uh, the readers, they just, they just want to talk to you and hang out and have fun. They don't, you know, they're really cool to get to know all these. And, you know, I'm like, I'm talking to people from Africa and from, you know, Australia and England and everywhere. And I'm like, that's so cool. That someone like in freaking South Africa is reading my books. And you yet, know, so and, and yet it, you're it always is. saying you're always going around saying I'm not that popular. Nobody really knows me, and I don't I'm always like, say that. You, I'm like you're the Karen Lynch. Everybody knows you, like only you, because you you put that label on me. Uh, so you wear. It's that okay. Thing. She gave she gave me the hashtag because Pat. She said because, it like it was my hashtag. Okay, yeah, I mean. <laughs> Everybody has to have something, right? I don't really, I don't really have, I mean, I do have something that Karen kind of like says I was her book bitch. So everybody, I'm sorry (laughs) that, you know, Karen said, you know, Jock's my book bitch. And I was like, well, okay, I'm going to get a shirt and just put Karen, Karen Lynch's book bitch. And I'm going to wear that when we go to PenCon. So everybody knows I'm your property. So so there you go. You can be the Karen. And I think something else about the fan. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean, and, and and the thing about the thing about Karen that I will say, like Karen is hardworking and she's you know on that grind trying to make sure Chris's story comes out to you know what we just got because it's Chris, right? But then she still makes time to come in to the group and you know just kind of hang out and and look at what the comments are and make comments. So it's not like you know she might not have time to be in there every day, but she does come in and she floats through and she you know comments and you know thanks people and people appreciate you Karen for taking the time to do that and Caitlin we appreciate you taking the time to stop in because you're part of the family and um and and that's what the whole community is about you guys have said it um it's it's family and we're all related by a book or two and a couple characters and uh it, it's just it's just a lot of fun and so you won't see me posting in there that much because I don't like to keep stuff clean so I just post that stuff other places <laughs> I mean, I just tell people to go look at it, but don't look at it. Don't post in the Mohiri group or anything like that. But, okay, so I've rambled on, but Karen, we got to know a little bit about 
We got to know what's going <laughs> Wait, everybody, she's got her hand over her face. Wait, does that mean I shouldn't ask? Because you know I'm I don't going know. to. I don't know what you're going to ask. Oh, yes, you do. I know oh, what she's yeah. going to ask. You know where I'm going. There's a there's a certain oh, blonde there's a certain blonde warrior Mohiri that we are all waiting who's got oh, dimples Jordan. and green eyes and <laughs> um and his book is called Faded. And now I won't put you on the spot and say do we have a release date because yeah I'm not we don't. Ask you. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um so what's been going on in your how has Chris been talking to you lately? What's going on with Chris? You know, for a guy who's so easygoing in the other books and Nicholas's best friend and stuff like that, he's pretty stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> he's being a little difficult. And I think, um, I was telling someone recently, I think for me, the thing with Chris is that Chris has always been the comic relief to Nicholas's serious side. So he's like the light side to Nicholas's dark. And... Um, he's always been there in a very supportive role. And, you know, he got all the, the funny lines and stuff like that. And now Chris is in that role. Mm -hmm. And it's taking me a while to get into his head and make that switch. So Chris goes from being the best friend, making fun of his friend, and now he's the one that's getting all crazy. <laughs> um, so it's a little, it's a, it's a, it's, it's a different, it's different. And, of course, you know, everyone wants to know who she is. Obviously, I'm not telling anyone who she is. Um, but um, it's a dual point of view. And, so that, and, again, those are difficult for me as well. And now I've got this new girl's head that I'm trying to get into mm -hmm. that everyone's like, who is she? Who is she? And so, so it's different, but I think it's going to be good. It's closer to the style of the trilogy than it was the Haven. Mm -hmm. So it's a love story, obviously, but it's closer to, it's going to have a little bit more action than Haven did. Haven was more, you know, well, it was called Haven for a reason, right? I mean, it takes place in a quieter place, but um, that's all I'm going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We'll take that. But we do like seeing um, Chris's cameo in Haven. So if you guys are missing uh, Chris, then you can check him out in Haven. And he was still his funny self in there. And um, there was a couple of other characters in there giving him the eye and checking him out and stuff. And, and I was like, yeah, back up. Back up off my boy, Chris, because, <laughs> yeah, he's mine. <laughs> I, will, I will tell you that some of the characters that people keep asking me for more books for, um, you will see them in Faded. Yes. So you will see Sarah Jasmine. and Nicholas. You will see Sarah and Nicholas in Faded. They won't be on a phone call overseas. You will see them. They're going to be there in Faded. And you'll see Jordan. And I don't know if anyone else, but no, yeah, Desmond. definitely see those. Come on. I haven't decided yet. Desmond's kind of a scene stealer. But, I, I, love but I like Desmond. He's totally cool. What's up with that? <laughs> yeah, I haven't, decided. I haven't decided, but I've still got a lot of book left, right? <laughs> I think he I think he needs his own he needs his own novella. Oh, should I have not said that out loud? Yeah, you shouldn't have. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> someone asked me someone asked me that recently and I was like, I don't think I don't know if I could do Desmond justice. Because I can only take him in small amounts myself, oh, and I wrote him. <laughs> but, 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 Caitlin, do you have a favorite character out of the books? Did you did you come to be at one with, with any of them, and you're like, oh, they're my favorite? I mean, Sarah's my favorite, but that's what happens when you embody a particular character. When, when she's the protagonist, and I'm narrating all her inner thoughts and, mm -hmm. and feelings, you, you build that connection with that character. So when mm -hmm. we switched narrators... You know, when we got Emma on Haven, then I started to get really attached to Emma because I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm living in that person's skin and inside her head. So, yeah. um, you know, we'll see what faded brings. <laughs> yeah, well, you well you did a good you did a, a wonderful job on all four books. So we thank you for that. And so tell us, um, what do you have going on? What projects are you working on currently? Um, I, I am working on a project of my own, actually, um, which may or may not have an audio version, but it is a book. It is nonfiction. And, uh, and I believe you and I have a date to talk about that in more detail in the future. So we do. Stay, 
stay tuned. I know that's a huge teaser, but but I am working <laughs> in the early stages on it. Well, I'm excited about that. Actually, I I will be chatting with Caitlin twice, two more times actually, because Caitlin is joining the featured voice. And I don't remember if you said you wanted to do season two or season three. Doesn't matter. She's on one of those. So we'll get more uh, in-depth details about Caitlin and all of her narrating projects and, and all fun facts about Caitlin and her office slash son's playroom and um, all the stuff on the wall. As I keep looking, I'm trying to see. I think, is there... Let's get tent behind her. Doesn't is that like, like a, a banner? What is that banner under the map? Is, it's okay. his name, but don't read it out loud. <laughs> okay, no, no, I won't do that. But yeah, so, and then I see something hanging up in the back, and then some stuff in the corner. I'm like being all nosy. Oh, she's got a wooden door. No. <laughs> and and then all I see is Karen's chin. Like, she's not even showing us her what whole face anymore. What do you mean all you see my chin? I'm like, I don't see any of you any in there anymore. <laughs> okay, yeah, she's standing. Karen got her, fixed her hair for us. So you can't see it, but we're enjoying it. She looks fantastic, and um, so yeah, this has been so this has been so much fun, guys. If you are looking to, um, if you've never listened to an audio book, or if you've listened to Karen's books on audio and you haven't left a review, please do. Um, narrators need reviews just like authors need reviews so go in let them know that you enjoy what they did how they performed in in that book it's it's very important if you have not picked up haven yet we will be doing a giveaway for haven um and we will post it later on this week it'll be a listen to win we'll post a question if you listened and you have the answer then you will win um i have a chance to win a copy of haven on audio as I am still chatting and I would like to drink my water, I can't. Um, I would like for you all to make sure that you are following Karen and Caitlin on social media. Now, we know Caitlin is not on Twitter yet. We're working on that, right, Caitlin? We're working on Twitter. You're, you're trying to win me over. <laughs> yes, we're working on Twitter. But Karen, tell everybody where they can find you on social media. Oh. Uh, and she's well, looking Facebook. at something. Yeah, Facebook. <laughs> On my Facebook page, you just look me up, Karen Lynch. My Twitter handle is Karen Lynch NL, and NL stands for Newfoundland, by the way. And then my website is KarenLynchNL.com. So I just wanted to keep the same. And then I'm on, and I think on Instagram, Instagram, I think I'm Karen Lynch NL on Instagram as well. I try to keep it the same. I couldn't, I when I went to get my URL, I my Karen Lynch was gone, so I had to use something else so i went with that and and karen is actually going to be traveling and she's going to be gone from us for a couple days we're going to miss you karen so you enjoy your trip and karen just celebrated a birthday everybody that's all i'm gonna say about that so <laughs> if you did not go and tell her happy birthday you just go and say happy birthday and you keep writing that's that's what you that's the hashtag happy birthday and keep writing and caitlin <laughs> caitlin how can we how can our listeners connect with you so i'm on facebook under caitlin greer meister um you can find my website is caitlin um and i do have an instagram account also using all three names caitlin greer meister um, but I haven't done anything with it yet, and Karen's been on my case to do it, so I promise there is something Where coming is there. Where is your profile picture, woman? <laughs> <laughs> I promise there is something coming there, but for now, the best place to follow me is on Facebook, uh, Caitlin Greer Meister, and that last name is a little tricky sometimes. It's M-E-I-S-T-E-R, and you'll know it's me because I'm wearing a bright pink shirt, <laughs> and I would love to see anybody there who uh, who isn't there already and, and follow along. Well, that sounds great. So everybody just look for the bright pink shirt, which is the same thing she always tells me. I have a picture of the one with the bright the bright pink shirt. And I say, okay, well, bright pink shirt is. That should be your new hashtag, bright pink shirt. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I still like because, Patch, you're going you're gonna to always have that. You'll be like 90 years old, and I'll be like, remember when you narrated that book? Because, Patch. <laughs> and in case you guys didn't know, uh, another fun fact is that Caitlin narrated Nora Gray 
and the Hush Hush Saga. And then she had Sarah Gray in the Relentless series. So it's just something about those grays. I don't know. So kudos to you. (laughs) Caitlin, did you also do a James Patterson book? I did. I I did a James Patterson book shot, The Shut-In. That's pretty cool. She's, yeah, that's, she's the, got skills. that's the second most recent. James Thank Patterson, that's, that's pretty up there, James Patterson. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, congratulations to you. And so, everybody, thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Audio Flow. Again, I want to thank Karen Lynch and Caitlin Greer for joining us today. Be sure that you are following the Audio Flow on Facebook at The Audio Flow, also on Twitter at The underscore audio underscore flow, Instagram, The Audio Flow. I do try to keep it simple too, so just look The Audio Flow up. You can even Google us and you'd probably find us. You can also hear all of our podcasts now streaming on iHeartRadio. We are also on iTunes, Google Play, and tune in. So we're everywhere. We're building an audience with you guys, and we love you, and we thank you so much for listening. And be sure that you are following so that you can enter for your chance to win a Haven Audio Code. All right. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you, John. Thank you. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.